Now let's talk about an industry here in southern New England that doesn't get much attention as an industry. We're talking about art galleries. You may be surprised at how many there are in this area. Mark Murphy, the editor of the Providence Business News, joins us now to talk about the cover story in the current edition of the newspapers, galleries, art, and business on the edge. I was surprised to read over a hundred art galleries exist. Yeah, well, I, I mean, if you think about it, uh, Rhode Island has this tradition of the arts. I mean, you, I mean, obviously, Rhode Island School of Design, but Rhode Island College, Johnson and Wales, they all have strong arts programs and different pieces. So the arts ecosystem itself is actually pretty large. It's about 1.8 billion dollars. They, we've decided to concentrate on art galleries. So you know, and this is a, these are private enterprises mostly, but some are nonprofits. Uh, and it's about the the showing and buying of individual pieces of art. And they say even in good economic times, the gallery owners are anxious. I think I understand why you explained it here too. That when the economy goes south, or maybe when personal budgets, household budgets, go south, spending on pieces of art is the first thing they remove from their spending. Yeah, I mean, a number of years ago, for instance, we profiled a, 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 an art gallery that had opened, and they were actually expanding. And within a couple of years of that profile, both of the both of the galleries were closed. Mm -hmm. And we even have a quote in here that you know, but for every gallery that closes, another one opens. And so there's a there's an appetite for it. There's an entrepreneurial appetite for it. But as you say, when when budgets get tight, certain kinds of discretionary spending go out the window. And, and arts, uh, art is probably one of the first things to go. They do have, that is the art uh, gallery industry, as an industry has a state incentive that uh, might help? Well, it's a sales tax exemption. It used to be for certain districts, but a couple of years ago, the state expanded it to, to the entire state. Um, so if you buy uh, at a gallery, there's no sales tax on it. Now, that doesn't cover people who buy remotely, say, on the internet, and there's a lot of that going on. And that's one of the challenges, too, for art galleries. There's a lot more internet buying uh, of art than there used to be. So, you know, it, it's difficult. People are, are going directly to artists or other sort of brokers to find it, and that takes the, a little bit, siphons a little bit of the income away from the galleries. Yeah, but so, some uh, art galleries are thriving, I think the article reads, despite the, the existence and the uh, thriving of the online part of it. Well, like many specialist retailers, uh, you know, if you find clientele and you treat them well and you, you point them in the right direction, you'll get a certain amount of loyalty. So. Yes, there are those who are going to succeed, just like in almost any business. You could think of it as restaurants. Mm -hmm. I mean, a lot of restaurants open and close, but certain restaurants, once they get a niche and, and they're identified as such, they're going to be successful for a long time. This is a 16 to $18 million industry in the state. There's much more about it in the current edition, online and in print of the Providence Business News. And Mark Murphy, thank you for joining us. Thank you, Frank.